Plus, a Metro East man dies in what investigators are calling a suspicious fire. News 4 getting new information on the victim and the investigation. And also ahead, it is the first time in nearly four decades that you have woken up with a new Triple Crown winner. We'll take you to Belmont. Coming up, News 4 This Morning starts right now. Live from KMOV, this is News 4 This Morning. Good Sunday morning to all of you. It is 7.01 on this Sunday, June 7th, as we take a live look from our KMOV studios in beautiful downtown St. Louis. And speaking of beautiful, wow, you see the arch and next to it, just the sun is shining, just gorgeous out there to get your morning started. But good morning and of course, a very happy Sunday to all of you. I'm Laura Hedegar in for Robin Smith. And Kristen Cornett looks pretty good out there. Doesn't look bad, mm -mm. but uh, if you notice the temperature on the bottom of the screen, interesting to note that we jumped from 73 last hour to 77 this hour. Ooh. That's a pretty big jump mm -hmm. from 6 to 7 a.m. All right, thank you, Kristen. It has been a violent and busy five hours in the city of St. Louis. Police responding to three shooting scenes since 2 o'clock this morning. One of those was in the 4300 block of Chippewa. That is in the Tower Grove South neighborhood. News 4's Mamugo Adigwe joins us now with the latest on that case. Two other people were also shot overnight near Bell Reef Park in South City. They are expected to survive. Officials say, though, this happened just after 2 o'clock this morning near the intersection of South Broadway and Elwood. No word on any suspects or what exactly led up to the shooting. Police tell us that they are also investigating a shooting scene in the 3900 block of South Broadway and that these two might be related. You can depend on News 4 to continue tracking these cases and bring you any new information as we get it. News 4 tracking more crime this morning. New information about a homicide in North St. Louis. It happened early yesterday morning in the 3800 block of Sullivan. That's relatively close to Fairgrounds Park. Police say they found 27 year old Travis Phillips on the third floor of a vacant home. He'd been shot in the head and was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators are still looking for a 26 year old suspect. A 20 year old faces murder charges this morning. That is after a manhunt for him last week. According to St. Louis County prosecutors, Terrence Harvey is in custody. He is accused of killing 18 year old DeMarco Watson on Dennis Drive near Delwood. Police say the motive for this shooting is unclear. Illinois State Police are investigating the shooting death of a 24 year old man in Caseyville. Police say the victim was shot during some type of altercation at a home on Can Kelly Lane. Investigators are talking to several witnesses and based on that, police believe the victim and the suspect knew each other. At this point, though, no one has been charged in the shooting. News 4 tracking the case of a deadly fire out of the Metro East. Collinsville Police and the Illinois State Fire Marshal are now investigating what they call a suspicious fatal fire. News 4's Alexis Zotos is learning new details about the victim and the investigation. Police are still trying to determine... News 4 following another developing story out of the Metro East. The Air Force is working to find a missing officer from Scott Air Force Base. Air Force officials tell us Technical Sergeant David Helm is wanted for questioning in an ongoing military investigation. Friends say the 35 year old disappeared on May 29th. He was on his way to visit his parents in Tennessee. Those friends believe he could be in danger. Officials say Helm was riding a black Yamaha motorcycle with Illinois plates. Meanwhile, St. Louis County police continue searching for a missing Sunset Hills woman. Dozens of officers were in Gerald, Missouri and Franklin County on Friday. They searched a rural property belonging to John and Linda McLaughlin. 57 year old Linda has been missing since last Monday night. Investigators used cadaver dogs during the search, but police tell News 4 they are still optimistic that McLaughlin is alive. You can depend on News 4 to stay on top of any new developments in this case. And still to come on News 4 this morning, a manhunt is still underway in New York after two convicted murderers escaped from a maximum security prison. We've got the latest on the search. Plus, an earthquake claims the lives of over a dozen in Malaysia. We've got the latest straight ahead on News 4 this morning. The manhunt continues this morning for two convicted killers, two guys who escaped a maximum security prison in New York. Authorities say the inmates used power tools to cut through a steel wall and followed a series of tunnels to freedom. Rose Spillman reports from the Clinton Correctional Facility in upstate New York. Officials say for willing to uh, go for it. 
The site at the old Chrysler plant in Fenton has been empty for years, but now a new plan is in place to put it to good use. The proposal would turn the site into a multi-purpose hockey arena. Some Fenton folks are willing to help make that happen. The proposed arena comes with a $45 million price tag. Supporters of the project tells News 4 it will bring jobs and minor league hockey to Fenton. I think it'd be great for the city. So here's a look at the project by the numbers. It would seat more than 6,000 fans. There would be 30 luxury suites and 200 club seats. No word yet from Fenton leaders on the possible arena, but plans to continue working on the proposal are moving forward. Horse racing's greatest drought came to an end last night. American Pharaoh won the Belmont Stakes and the Triple Crown. Winnie Gillette reports from Belmont, New York. American Pharaoh watching out for you. The class of 2015 seems more optimistic about job prospects than graduates who came before them. But will optimism equal opportunities? News 4's Steve Savard takes a look at expectations versus reality in a special Sunday morning edition of News 4 Schools. Maureen Buckwalter's communications degree. The city of St. Louis is also working to connect graduates with construction jobs. The Building Union Diversity Program is the first of its kind in the country, and it's also been recognized by the White House. So here's how it works. Graduates complete seven weeks of training to become a union apprentice. After that, they're guaranteed an interview with one of seven companies offering full-time union jobs. One of the best things. The city also unveiled a website to connect grads with job opportunities in the construction field. You can find a link to that on our website, KMOV.com. So to come on News 4 this morning, leaders across the country gathering to honor the life of Vice President Joe Biden's son, Bo. We'll be right back. Live from KMOV, this is News 4 This Morning. It is 7.30 on this gorgeous Sunday morning as we take a live look at the arch in beautiful downtown St. Louis. You see the sun is shining and it is already in the upper 70s here in the city of St. Louis. Good morning and a very happy Sunday to all of you. I'm Laura Hedegar in for Robin Smith. Over there, meteorologist Kristen Cornett, and it is steamy already. You know, a big difference this morning walking out the door versus mm -hmm. yesterday morning. Temperatures are warmer, the humidity levels are a lot higher. All right, thank you, Kristen. It was a violent and busy night for police in the city of St. Louis. They responded to three shooting scenes since 2 o'clock this morning. One of those was on Chippewa. News 4's Mugo Digway joins us now with the latest on that investigation. And just before that homicide, two people were also shot overnight near Bell Reef Park in South City. They are expected to survive. Officials say this happened just after 2 o'clock this morning near the intersection of South Broadway and Elwood. No word on any suspects or what exactly led up to the shooting. Police are telling us the shooting scene in the 3900 block of South Broadway is also related to this shooting. You can depend on News 4 to continue tracking these cases and bring you any new information as we get it. A call for action after a state report shows black drivers are much more likely to get pulled over in the show me state. News 4 is learning African American drivers were 75% more likely to be stopped than white drivers in 2014. To put that into some perspective for you, looking back at the year 2000, that number was about 31%. Those who are calling for change say it's proof racial profiling still exists. We have to admit that there's a problem and this is a problem that we have to get our hands around and, and figure out how to solve. The Attorney General's office analyzed nearly 1.7 million traffic stops from police departments across the state. It is the first weekend residents in Wellston, Venita Park and Venita Terrace have been protected by a new police co-op. News 4 told you last week that Wellston officials voted to shut down their police department immediately. Our Brittany Noble Jones explains how the shared service program works. You're watching News 4, watching out for you. President Barack Obama calling Bo Biden simply someone who cared. The president delivered the eulogy in Wilmington, Delaware on Saturday. Mourners for Vice President Joe Biden's oldest child included Hillary Clinton, Cold Place Chris Martin, and members of the presidential cabinet. As Andy Rose reports, Biden was remembered as a great man with a big heart. About a... If you ever fly, you'll definitely want to pay attention to this story. We are finding out that a new report is raising concerns about the job performance of TSA workers. 
They failed an undercover test when it came to getting explosives and weapons through security. Teams from the Department of Homeland Security posed as passengers trying to pass through security with the prohibited items. TSA officers failed 67 out of 70 tests to get the items through. And good news for drivers this morning, a Japanese manufacturer promises to stop producing defective airbags. News 4 has been reporting on the dangers of Takata airbags for months. Here's the issue. Under hot and humid conditions, they can explode, sending shrapnel into drivers and passengers. News 4 investigates Chris Nagus shows you what steps are being taken to keep you safe. Now, though, back to four of the major stories you need to know on this Sunday morning. It is in this morning's four to go. City police investigating the latest homicide. Police say they were called to the 4300 block of Chippewa around three o'clock this morning. That's where they found a man shot in the chest. No word right now on any suspects. By our calculations, this is the 75th homicide in the city of St. Louis this year. About an hour before that, though, two people were also shot overnight near Bell Reeve Park in South City. Officials say this happened just after two this morning near the intersection of South Broadway and Elwood. They are expected to survive. No word on any suspects or what led up to that shooting. Heads up for anyone driving between Missouri and Illinois this morning. IDOT closed all eastbound lanes of the Martin Luther King Bridge. The closure allows road crews to install scaffolding for upcoming repairs. Transportation officials say the eastbound lane should reopen by 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. And for the first time since 1973, there is a triple crown winner. American Pharaoh runs into the history books, easily winning the Belmont Stakes last night. 37 years is all it took for a horse to again win the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont Stakes. Very cool. We both watched it. We got a little emotional. Pretty exciting it stuff. It was. Want to remind folks, looking for storms to come in, but not before tonight. In the meantime, it's going to be a hot and humid day. Look for a high of 93 degrees.